Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to have some tips for summertime kefir making. It's very warm out here today. I have a, <clears throat> I've had a number of videos ready that I just haven't got uploaded and now it's like past the point. So uh, I'm going to make a quick one today. It's uh, really warm in my house, 80 degrees, which is fine. So I'm going to talk about how I'm doing this kefir right now being so hot. So these just came out of the fridge. It looks like there's nothing going on. I haven't taken them out at all. Um, because what's going on now is that it's so warm. It's basically fermenting as much as I need it to in the refrigerator. Because once I pull it out, it's accelerating really fast. And once I strain the grains out, it's going to keep fermenting really fast and it'll separate more. So we're going to go ahead and drain this. This is what I've determined after a few days and having some separations, realizing I need to go earlier. It's going to come out and it kind of looks like milk. Not super thick right now. But that's fine because it only takes a half an hour for it to, uh, not even a half hour to thicken up and everything. So there's one. Let me go ahead and get these grains out. This is one of my containers. Remember, I got these grains about two and a half months ago from a couple teaspoons. So you can see they've grown quite a bit and I have another one here. And I lost half of them when I spilt one on the ground. I lost half the grains already once, and I've been eating the small ones out of here. If you have really tiny ones, what I'm finding, guys, is when you have a whole bunch of little tiny ones, they will ferment really fast, and it'll ferment your milk really fast because there's so many small ones with a lot of surface area. So once you start getting a lot of growth, I pretty much am taking out really tiny ones. I shouldn't touch that with my hand, but like that small or smaller, I'm just going ahead and putting them in my keeper and then eating them. And that will uh, help keep the larger grains going and not get filled up with a bunch of little grains. They could be breaking up some. If you're really aggressive when you're straining them out, it can break little pieces off and then you end up with propagating more grains instead of larger grains. So that's just one thing to keep an eye on. All right, hang on, let me get rid of these. All right, we got that one strained out. Now let's do the second one here. And yes, right now it looks pretty thin like milk. Because when you take it out, it takes off super fast. Because I have a lot of grains in here. Very high grain ratio. I'm running about 50%. I could adjust it, but I don't really need more kefir right now. A lot of times I'll make, if I need more kefir, I just make another batch in the same day. I could make four batches in a day, five batches if I wanted to, if I didn't refrigerate it. Um, it does turn out better refrigerated, at least for a sh part of the time, because that helps to thicken it up more during the ferment. So yeah, that's a lot. That's my second one. Um, I had been separating smaller grains into this one so that they could grow separately and not hog out on the other one. So uh, let me go through these here. There's still some large ones in there, but lots of the smaller ones that I put in to get them to grow just in a different container. They're not bad. Still some good sized ones in here, but also a lot of the smaller ones, which with those, I'm just going to eat those or drink them down with my drink. It's real nice. All right, here are those drained out. I just found out my camera lens was dirty, so clean that up. Um, this is how much grains I had in there and I had the milk up to here so it's 
50% grain ratio or more. Possibly more than 50% because I only have the milk up to there. I can go higher, but I like to leave some room for air. You want some room for air in the container and also room so you can shake it and stir it. This one needs to be almost put into a bigger container now because I'm only filling it up a certain amount, which is about 50%. And you can adjust that down and go one third. It just takes longer. You adjust your timing as you see fit once you get your process down. All right, here's our key for today. It has not been left out at room temperature at all, except for a little bit before I put it in the refrigerator. I'll give you a rundown on what I did on that. But uh, as you can see, it, it looks, it's not bad. It's still thick. It's not super thick. You can see the uh, buildup on the sides from the kefir starting. But this is fermenting at an accelerated rate right now. Just from being in this air, it's taking off right now. So really what I like to do, when I'm in a situation when the grains aren't being uh, let out or without any tops off, because I do, yeah, without the tops off, because obviously I put a top on in the refrigerator, I'll take it out and I either Take the top off and let it air out for a little bit, which is not going to be very long, but you do want oxygen available in regular increments to the grains. It doesn't have to be all the time at all. You'll have a little air pocket in here. Sometimes I just let some air in and then I'll put the lid back on and it's only going to be out for like an hour or something and then that carbonates it up more. You might take it out, leave the lid off so some air can get in there for the first half if you're taking it out to put on the counter it depends on how fast your keeper's going and then put the lid on for the last bit and that will condense it and compress it and add more carbonation when you have the lid on at the ending times and so yeah when it's not out much then i'll let the i'll let the grains sit out on the counter for a while maybe 10 15 minutes even up to a half an hour is fine that lets oxygen get to them oxygen helps keep your Yeast, strong, comes from the air. So that's it. And it warms up the grains a little bit as they're sitting out. Just having the grains sitting out and warming up a few degrees will increase your uh, fermentation when you put milk in there. Rather than being cold and going straight with cold milk, I mean, every degree, every degree makes a difference. So just keep that in mind. Mm, there's some big grains in there, maybe. That's fine. Tons of them, and they're just nonstop growing. So, yeah, see, it looks fairly thin, but that's because I have a ex super accelerated fermentation because it's 80 degrees in my house instead of 60 degrees in the winter. So this is about how much kefir I'm dealing with that I'm drinking on a daily basis right now. If for some reason I need more, I'll just pull it out and do another batch, which may only take an hour of sitting out on the counter if it's only been in the refrigerator for half a day. You know, depending on the amount of time in the refrigerator is gonna change the amount of time it needs to be out in correlation with your grain ratios. So this here, in about a half an hour, this will be thickened up. That's how fast the second ferment goes. So you don't wanna be messing around with it. Right now, you want to drink it within the half hour. It's going to be, it's going to have the most amount of carbonation. If you let it sit, carbonation uh, may reduce. And look at the thickness right now, and we'll check it in a half an hour. So that's what we got right now. In a minute, I'll let you guys know. I mean, you can totally drink it right now, no problem. But usually it takes a little while to drink. But if I start drinking it now, by the time I get halfway, it'll already be solidifying and getting really thick. All right, guys. Um, I got to making thumbnails and editing the video, and it has been a half an hour, which was way too long. I normally would have already been drinking it, and it would have been gone by now. But as you can see, it already separated out that much way into the bottom. Thickness has increased. Oh, that does show you how fast 
it can uh, ferment there. Or you a lot of whey on the bottom. All right, and also these grains have been sitting out that whole time also for half an hour. Now what sometimes you'll find is that it'll separate whey into the bottom because the little bit of milk that was left around them has uh, been fermented. So I usually, I'm gonna pour that whey out. Yeah, so that doesn't really hurt them to leave them sit out for a while. All right, I got those filled up and ready to go. Now since the grains did sit out for a while, like I said, the grains got warm, so they are gonna ferment a little faster. That's it, guys. Y'all have a good day. Enjoy your kefir. Happy keferin'.